Manila kasi ito po sa restaurant. Back in 2015 or 2016, una ako napunta dito. But at that time, hindi pa ako nasa, wala pa ako sa OBG nun. Friday yun, nagliliwaliw-liwaliw na kami kasama ng mga kasama ko sa trabaho. Not expecting, during the year 2018, 2019, 2020, nandito na ako as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Singing praises to Him, matagaaran ang kanyang salita. You really don't know what can happen to you in the next year. Kaya masarap na magtiwala lang sa Diyos. Kasi pag tinawag ka, tatawagin ka niya at at his appointed time. Amen. Amen. Sarap. Okay. Nagpapatuloy tayo. Last week, Bible school tayo ha, uh, we, we tackled 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Inubos natin yung uh, agape love ang nariscuss natin last week. Sa mga wala last week, kwentuhan niyo sila ate. Wala last week. Amen. Ngayon naman, we'll proceed to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Sige, ano, ay, ano, dito pala sa ating Uh, taas to, ano? Taas? Baba. 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 Ah, baba. <laughs> Bago to eh. Baba. Ayan. First Corinthians. But First Corinthians chapter 14 has 40 verses. Ngayong araw nito, tatay natin Marisa! more than you all, sabi ni Paul. 
Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Lord, maraming maraming salamat sa salita ninyo. And it's what gives us life. And we are looking forward always that each time we have this opportunity, Lord, to study your word, to know more about you. Naway makuha namin ang principles and ma-apply namin ang principles na ito sa araw-araw namin pamumuhay so that our brethren and the people outside the church will see your glory in us, Lord. And Lord, we're asking you to illuminate your word to us through your Holy Spirit in us. Speak your revelations, Lord. Impart your knowledge unto us, Lord. And now, ngayon, may take away kami na hindi namin makakalimutan sa buong mundo. Amen. Amen. And bless you, may glorify your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ang linaw, ano? Kahit hindi na ako mag-explain, ang linaw na sinasabi ni Paul. <laughs> Pero alam nyo, sa chapter na ito, uh, makikita nyo, Paul is giving emphasis to two spiritual gifts. Kasi from chapter 12, doon nag-start magtapos si Paul ng spiritual gifts. 13, medyo nag-change siya. He talked about agape love. Now in verse 14, dito na magtatapos yung discussion niya or yung arguments niya about spiritual gifts. And in this chapter, you will notice that he focuses on two specific gifts. Gifts of tongues and gifts of prophecies. Malamang dahil ang gifts of tongues is ito yung dinet-design ng karamihan sa mga Corinthians or ka kadalasan na pinapractice nila during worship services. Kung kaya naman, I'd like to make a clarification here that if you're gonna read it, Paul is not against spiritual gifts. Ang kinukol out niya sa mga Corinthian Christians is the way they practice, the way they use the spiritual gifts. And manonotice ninyo pa ulit-ulit na sinabi ni, sinasabi ni Paul sa kanyang sulat na ito, he always drives home his points in the context of gathered services, in the context of public worship, in the context ng pagtitipon-tipon ng mga kapatiran, gaya ng manong meron tayo ngayon. In the context, sa kaya edification of the church, maya maya niya inuulit. And you will notice here that Paul is just very practical, and lagi niyang pinapush ang Corinthian Christians to be other-centered, not just think of yourselves, and always edification. Makikita nyo ba? Ulit-ulit na sinimini mention na dito. Now, let's see our observations sa... Ah, take it down. Sa chapter nito. You will see that from verses 1 to 5, Paul emphasizes that prophecy is superior than the gift of tongues in terms of its edification sa body or sa church. From verses 6 to 9, you will notice that Paul emphasizes the need or the importance of the gift of interpretation of tongues for edification ng mas nakararami. Ay, verses 20 to 25, you will notice him talking about the functions of the gifts. Kung ang gift of tongues, para saan yan? Para kanino yan? Ang gift of prophecy, para kanino yan? Saan yung ginagamit? Verses 26 to 40, you will notice that he is discussing about order in church meetings and he gives some final instructions right here. Okay, refresh tayo kasi in chapter 12, doon niya ininumerate yung iba't ibang klase ng spiritual gifts. Let's refresh, let's define the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is a supernatural gift. Everybody say, supernatural, supernatural gift. gift. Yes. Ibig sabihin, hindi galing sa atin. This gift comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this gift, along with the others, uh, along with the other gifts, ay ibibigay lamang sa atin as the Spirit wills. Amen. Kung kagustuhan lamang niya. Because it is God who knows our hearts best. Kung ano motivation ng mga puso natin. Amen. What is tongues? It is a personal language of prayer given by God, whereby the believer, you, can communicate with God beyond the limits of knowledge and understanding. When you notice that there are two classes of classes of tongues, there are known tongues, there are unknown tongues. The known tongues, this is what happened in Pentecost, in Acts chapter chapter two, when you read it, where the Galileans were praising the Lord in the language of the mga tao doon. That's what you call known tongues. The unknown tongues, this is what was used by Paul here. You cannot understand. It's not. Uh, it's not an earthly language, but it's a supernatural language. Hindi mo na intindihan pero ang panginoon na upunawaan ka. Because Paul here says that you are speaking in mystery sa sa ibang verses nga dyan. That's tongues. Next gift is prophecy. The gift for prophecy again is a 
supernatural gift. Exactly. It's the Lord who gives us that. And prophecy is the telling forth of God's message in a particular situation, always in accord with His Word and His current work. Sometimes, this has the character of foretelling the future. So yung proper prophecy is um, it's a unique inspiration from God where, wherein a believer will release something para sa current situation na tao or he can release something that concerns the future. Gaya ng pagbibigay ng warnings, pagbibigay ng precautions sa mga tao, gaya ng reminders, instructions, and warnings na binibigay na sa atin since 2019 hanggang this year. That's prophecy. Alright. Sige. Let's go through the verses one by one. Diba? Chapter 13, tinapos ni Paul. Faith, hope, and love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. Chapter 14, sinimulan uli niya. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Notice the difference of the words that ginamit niya. Sabi niya, Pursue love. You pursue. It's something that you have when action, an action in, may gagawin ka. Sikapin mong ipakita ang pag-ibig sa ibang tao. Tapos sa ginamit sa spiritual gifts, desire spiritual gifts. Kasi we can only desire. Kung ayaw ibigay sa atin ng Panginoon, we cannot have that. But, Paul always encourages them, reminds them to desire spiritual gifts for the purpose na matulungan ang Ibang tao, ang, ang church, ang body of Christ. You said that. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you might prophesy. Bakit? Why especially prophesy? For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. So kung unknown tongue, so sinasabi natin dito, oo nga na pala nun. Kasi kung magtatangs ako na wala naman nakakaunawa sa atin, parang wala tayong mapapala during the worship service, ha? Kasi, ang object ng tongues is ang Panginoon. We communicate to God. Yes? Supernatural language we use to communicate with God, not to men. Tapos, however, in the spirit, He speaks mysteries. Ito yung sinabi ko kanina kasi maari hindi mo, ikaw mismo, hindi mo naunawaan sinasabi mo, but the Lord understands you. But he who prophesies speaks edification. Ano ba ang edification? Uh, yung makakatulong sa iba. When we say edification, something that can build others up. Something that can improve your spiritual wisdom. Something that can encourage you, can motivate you, can inspire you, can remind you, can give you insight. Yun ang sinasabi ng edification. And exhortation. Anong exhortation? upang mapalago, encouragement, kung kaya we exhort giving, we encourage others to give, we exhort them, we encourage them to come here para marinig ang salita ng Diyos as often as they can. And, comfort to men. This does not only speak of consolation, with comfort, comfort, but it also involves strengthening somebody. Alam, kasi tayo, mga sugatan tayo. Pag nasa labas tayo ng church, ang dami-dami nating challenges sa buhay. But when we come together, yan ang goal ng bawat isa. We strengthen each other. Amen. Amen. Next! Okay. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So, ano nga na pala, no? Kasi kung hindi ka naunawa ng iba, wala talaga sila makukuha. Pero ikaw mismo, who has experienced tongues here? Who's do, who's, who's, who's do it? Tongues here. We do, we do, we do. Ako personally, hindi ko pa na-experience yung known tongues na sinasabi na may nakapag-interpret. At wala pa ako nakilala who has the gift to interpret. But I use this in my devo devotional life. But when I pray to God, when I run out of words, kung anong sasabihin sa Ama, I, 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 I use tongues. So, and in that way, I can also, um, I have heard several testimonies. Last week, by yun, or two weeks ago, when we had Korean visitors, may, may visita di ba kayo Korean? Yes. Uh, last week kasi, after the prayer meeting dun sa Dubai, nag-exhort din sila, they presented a vision and all, and I prayed together. And these women were prayer warriors. And we would always notice them na nagtatangs bago mag-pray mag in intelligible language. So yun nangyari, um, they all spoke in tongues, but at the same time, we felt, of course, the presence of the Holy Spirit there. 
not only in tongues, but they also spoke in intelligible, intelligible language. When they had an instruction on what to pray for, they delivered it in English. Sa mga unawaan ng mga, ng mga taga-OBG. Ayan. Edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Kasi nga, a prophecy is intended to be given to sa mga kapatiran, sa mga nasa church. I wish you all spoke with tongues. This is one proof that Paul is not against the gift of tongues. Kasi he wishes that all of them speak in tongues. But even more that you prophesy. Nagbigay niya naman siya ng dahilan. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Wala namang problema sa gift of tongues. Ang sinasabi lang ni Paul, you also pray that somebody could interpret the tongues. Kasi kung may makaka-interpret, merong mauunawa ang message ang mga kapatiran. At mauunawa nila kung para saan, ano ang sinasabi. Kesa sa Battle of Religion, wala lang love love. May naunawa kayo. Wala, di ba? Wala, di ba? Pero kung prophecy, kapag sinabi, singles, target kayo ng lust. Be careful. Uh, spend time more with God, blah, 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 blah. It's much clearer. And with intelligible language, mas natatandaan ninyo. Kasi naunawaan ang ating isip, eh. So, mas matatandaan natin, mas maatay natin sa buhay natin. Unless indeed, he interprets that the church may receive edification. But now, again, ina elaborate lang ni Paul. Brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by unique inspiration, or a special message from God, from the Holy Spirit, by knowledge, could be a word of knowledge, which is also a gift from the Holy Spirit, by prophesying, or by teaching, teaching meaning instructing from the scriptures. Even things without life, gumamit pa siya ng example para malinaw yung punto niya. Whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is pipe or play? So kung yung gitara, ano ka tayo? Wala, wala. Pero kung ipi-play ni John sa Examples para mas malinaw. Kasi yung tongues na parang ganun nga. Blaro jo, blaro, 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 blaro. Lalo yung naunawaan. Wala din ako naunawaan. But it edifies only me. Kasi I have heard also testimonies na so last two weeks, yung si Ate Wayne, yung asawa ni Kuya Ju, na nakatulad doon sa RFA, sabi niya, bag baguhan pa kasi siya eh. Ayaw ko sana itas yung kamay ko. Pero parang may force na ano. Tapos yung ibuka, nung start ko na ibuka yung bibig ko, nagtuloy-tuloy na daw siya mag-dance and I felt released. Yun yung very word niya. I felt released. Kasi nga, you may speak in mysteries when you speak in tongues. Kaya yung mga, yung sinasabi, you unburden your soul to the Lord. Yung mga concerns mo na hindi mo kaya ipabatid sa Panginoon in English, in Visaya, in Ilonggo, you can speak it in tongues. The Lord will understand you better. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Or if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? Bakit ito nagamit ni Paul? Kasi sa mga, sa sinaunang panahon, sa mga armies, gumagamit sila ng trumpet to sign up it. Bugles were used in military settings to signal the troops to take designated action. So, different melodies. To be retreat. Maaaring iba ang ano niya, retreat or attack, iba-iba. So, kaya niya ginamit, who will prepare for battle? Kung maling malay, maling mali yung laman yung tinutugtog mo sa trumpet, baka man karoon ng confusion. Yun, or disorder. Kaya makikita niyo in the latter verses na mention din niya, God is not the God of confusion, but of peace. So, likewise, ang haba ng ano niya, elaborate Unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how let me know what is spoken, for you will be speaking into the air. Para mo daw kinakausap ang hangin. Sampa. Alam, sumasagot siya. Para ganito lang. Sa sa si Kaisen. Kaisen, kung sa'yo po at hindi mo kagapon. Aray, aray! Aray, aray! Di ba nakasmile siya? Kasi dati pa, binibisaya po si Kaisen kasi akala ko bisaya siya. So, into the air, walang mapapala yung kausap mo. Ay! There are, it may be, so many kinds of 
of languages in the world and none of them is without significance which is true. Eh, napaka-creative ng Panginoon, ano? Kasi sa Pilipinas, hindi lang iisa ang libwahe natin. Merong Bisaya, merong Ilinon, merong Karaya, merong Batanggenyo, ala, eh, wala, 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 kasi pwede mong Batanggenyo, sino? Sino, sino? Sino? Kapitenyo ka po, eh. Kapitenyo, siguya. Yun. Therefore, I do not know the meaning of the language. I shall be a foreigner, self-explanatory, to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Wala. Magtititigan lang kayo, kasi wala akong nauunawakan. Yun yung ibig sabihin niya. As a reminder niya again, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, zealous yung pronunciation nito. Zealous, ibig sabihin parang they're earnestly desiring, gusto gusto nila. Kasi mga Corinthians naman talaga, mga matatalino, at at the same time, they're very spiritually gifted. It's just that, merong mga abuses nang nangyayari, merong nagkaroon ng character problem sa kanila. At uh, medyo hindi lang tapa yung pagkakagamit nila ng mga gifts dito. Let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Sabi niya, ano ang purpose, ano ang motivation, ano ang rason kung bakit you have to desire for desire spiritual gifts. Sabi niya, let it be for the edification, for the building up of the church that you seek to excel. So you will see uh, Paul here keeps on pointing na, wag mong isipin lang mong, ano mo sarili mo, isipin mo yung iba. Kasi napaka-practical nga naman. Kasi in this setting, what if my bagong attendee and he has never heard of tongues. It's his first time to attend a Christian worship service. And lahat kayo nag bla 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 meron pang roll roll sa floor. So parang, are you crazy? Nabuang mo! Sunday! Of course, iba? That person will become uncomfortable. Okay, ano ba? What Paul is trying to say to the Corinthians here is, Mga kapatid, be considerate of the people around you. Kasi mare, hindi, hindi lang kayo, hindi kayo kayo lang, yun ang dito. Think of those who have not yet heard. Think of those who have just come to, to hear the message of the Lord. Yung mga hindi pa komportable, yung hindi pa alam yung ganyan. Think of them, yun yung sinasabi niya. Kasi baka hindi na bumalak eh. Sayang, that's one soul. Ah, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Yan yung encouragement ni Paul. If you want to speak in tongue, pray also to the Holy Spirit that you may be able to interpret. Ikaw mismo or somebody could interpret what you are speaking in tongues. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Kasi your spirit, di ba, it, it's beyond the limits of your knowledge and understanding the definition of tongues kanina. My understanding is unfruitful, meaning my mind is not productive. Kasi hindi ko nauunawaan yung sinasabi mo. What is the conclusion then? So ano ngayon? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. So I can speak in tongues, and at the same time, speak, uh, pray using English, Tagalog, my own language. Para maintindihan din ng mga, ng mga kapatid ko. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Self-explanatory. Napakalino, napakasimple. Otherwise, sinulita naman niya. If you bless with the Spirit, how will He who occupies the place of the uninformed, ibig sabihin yung kausap mo, or yung pinag-pray mo, say amen at your giving of thanks, and He does not understand what you say. For example, if you judge, Pag-a-rizyala rin ka shuvala rin siya pag-a-rizyala. Pinawala ang kawala, di ba? No speak ka rin ba, pero... We praise you, Lord. We bless your name. You are the God who is alive. You are our Father who thinks, who, who knows our need even before we ask. Amen. Amen. O, di ba? Nakapag-amen ka. Kasi naunawaan po. Yun yung ibig sabihin ni Paul. Since he does not understand what you say for you, indeed, give thanks. Well, sige nga. Sige, mamabuti at nagpapasalamat ka sa Diyos na maayos. Pero hindi naman na-edify yung isa. Sinasabi niya. Sabi niya. Now, here is the proof that Paul is also practicing the tongues in his devotional life. Kasi alam niya ang value nito. Alam niya ang benefits ng tax sa sarili niyang buhay. When he is in his prayer closet praying to the Lord. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Sabi niya. Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding. Hello, ate. Magandang hapon. <laughs> I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Is that the last verse? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, interpretation time. 
So, anong gusto ipabati dito ni Paul? Pursue love? Pursue love? Sikapin natin, mahalin ng isa't isa. Itipakita ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa isa't isa. And desire spiritual gifts also. We can always pray to the Holy Spirit. But remember that our motivation should always be for the edification para matulungan ang iba. Uh, possessing spiritual gifts, hindi para sa self-glorification. Hindi para tayo ay sumikat. Hindi para tayo ay ma-acknowledge. Because like what I said last week, when the Lord possessed us, we became His. So we serve Him now using our body, using our time, using our resources, using, using our spiritual gifts, na galing din naman sa Kanya. Amen. Amen. And chapter 14 is in the context of the edification of the whole church. Ibig sabihin, nagsasuggest dito si Paul ng mga kaparaan na, that, uh, na makakabuti sa mas nakararami, hindi lamang sa iyo. So he encourages, at the end of the chapter, you will see, desire spiritual gifts. Speak in tongues, hindi niya din disregard hindi niya din disqualify ang gift na ito. But, desire it kasi it will benefit you and he knows the value of the gift himself. Ito, application time. So, ano ngayon? Kasi if uh, nanonood kayo sa YouTube or you are studying, you will see different denominations and different stands on this. Meron nagsasabi na wala nang gift of tongues, tapos na. Yung mga nagtawag sila na cessationists. Meron man na nagsasabi, especially mga Pentecostal na meron pa. And they actively use uh, the gift of tongues during worship services. So ano ngayon tayo? Saan tayo? We stand in the gap. Kasi, gaya nga na sabi natin, the Bible is still full of mysteries. May mga bagay that we can't put conclusion on na uh, the Lord is encouraging us to still study and seek Him more para maunawaan Amen. natin. So ano ngayon sa church, kung may marinig kang nagtatangs, tatakpan mo ba ang bibig niya at sasabihin mo, Sabi ni Paul sa chapter 14, huwag kang magtangs pag nasa church kasi ikaw na may edify. Hindi. Doon na natin i-apply ang agape love na sinasabi. Na, okay, now I understand that he would like to use the gift. Sige lang, sige lang. Pero tayo, in consideration sa mga taong nasa paligid natin, pagtilayan din natin ang mga ito. Kasi once I've even heard one uh, isang kapatira na sinabi, hindi ako makukonsentrate mag-pray kasi ang lakas mag-tongs ni ano, ni Kuya Ano, hindi ko sabihin ang pangalan, syempre. Mm-hmm. Pero, <laughs> alam mo yun, na-store mo yung isa kasi ang sobrang lakas nung pagtatangs ng isa. So, let's just be practical, let's be considerate sa paggamit ng mga gifts sa ito. Mm-hmm. And like what I said last week, how will you know your gifts? To serve. To serve. To serve the Lord. Malalaman mo. And you also desire, kasi in your spiritual journey in the Lord, um, and as you also put your time, your energy, your resources sa pag-study ng kanyang salita, madidiscover mo na kung saan kanya gusto. Anong gusto niyang, anong, ang gusto niyang lakaran mo? Mm-hmm. Anong gifts ang ibibigay niya sa'yo? You will notice that. And others will notice that in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You desire spiritual gifts? Amen. Sige gusto ng tongues. Amen. Sige gusto ng prophecy? Amen. Word of wisdom, healings, miracles. So, kung yes. saan tayo, we stand in the gap. Kasi we can't be conclusive sa mga bagay-bagay na to. But I personally believe that the Lord can still do what He wants to do. Ang sinasabi na nag-sees na, He can still make them available when He wants to. Amen. We can only desire, we can only pray. But what we have always to remember is, we desire this to express agape in the world. Amen. Amen. Okay? Chapter, ay, may, may second half pa pala yan, no? Sino mag discuss next week? <laughs> si Pastor, si Pastor. From chapter 20 to 40, madali na lang actually yun. <laughs> Nagturuan pa kayo ah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, here's a personal takeaway. Ang ginagawa namin dito, we're just studying in our own time. But I'm encouraging you, ang bawat isa sa atin also will study the scriptures of self. We can't be dogmatic sa bawat bagay. Pero ibang pa rin, pag bawat isa sa atin nagbabasa, nag-aaral, nag-meditate sa atin. Amen personal time. Amen. All right? Can we give the Lord a cup of praise? Amen. Oy, salamat, Lord. Ito na nga bang sinasabi ko. When you come here, when we gather together as a church, our goal should always be, what can I give? Kasi dati, di ba, ano kaya makukuha ko sa ano? Ano kaya